So we're going to talk about like hands-on with Kubernetes. So a lot of you guys that have read the documentation, viewed the websites, you know that there's a lot of hand-waving, right? So um, I do a lot of talks on the road, and I talk to sysadmins. They're like, you got to show me something real, right? So in this demo, that's the goal. We're going to try to show something you would actually do. So one of the good things about Kubernetes in general is that even though it's meant and designed to run large-scale infrastructure, it actually scales down to reality, right? There are about 0% of you that have Google-scale infrastructure that don't work at Google or Facebook. But normally, people have much smaller infrastructures, and Kubernetes actually works well for you as well. And the, the way I like to frame the thought pattern here around people coming from a more traditional infrastructure setup is this question here. How would you design your infrastructure if you could never log in, like ever? And when posed with that, when I take away assist admins SSH keys, you want to build a system that actually can be a little bit smart about what it does. You can't worry about host names because you're not going to log in. So let's walk through that pattern now and see what we end up with. So we're going to try a real world example. Here we have a cluster. So I have, I'm mimicking a bare metal environment. So we're not going to do this on the cloud. I'm using VMware. I have an iPixie server running locally on my machine. And we're going to actually do some cross-host uh, communication between the containers. And we're going to deploy this app. So here's a demo app called PG View. PG's View uh, will basically be a really cool startup idea of providing Postgres info as a service. Someone will probably give you a few bitcoins for that. <laughs> and we have a couple of requirements. So some real world requirements that I hear from people, it needs to be horizontally scalable. So you got to be able to add more nodes as you go. And you want to have things like, in this case, was dedicated like memcache per service. So you want some co-scheduling here. And easy as that sounds, that's really hard to pull off if you don't have things like a scheduler at your disposal. And then the, the holy grail is a Postgres database. This is where it all falls down, right? You bring in a database, and it has stateful data. How do you handle that? Well, spoiler, it's not going to be elegant, but it's going to be what you can do today. And operational requirements. We want to have automated service discovery. We want to do a lot of hand waving and configuring things. And we also want to try to do zero downtime, right? And for most people, zero downtime is really a pipe dream because they don't have the right tools in place. And we're going to see if we can pull that off. So the service we have looks like this. Um, it basically has a couple of endpoints, some RPC endpoints. You hit it, it will tell you all the features in your database. Postgres is pretty old school. It has all of your favorite languages if you're over 50. Um, <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the slide, so let's just get to it. So since we only have about a few minutes here, I won't be able to dig into the complete details. I'm going to assume you all know what a pod is. Do we know what a pod is? You can pretend you know what a pod is. Just raise your hand. You look cool to the person sitting next to you. But I'll, really, I'll show a pod really quick so we can all be on the same page. Um, so we have uh, this thing called pods, and all of you are familiar with containers. Pretend like you are if you're not. And the goal with Kubernetes is actually to provide a way of coupling the services that are true dependencies, right? How do you express dependencies between your services? So this particular app, I'm going to show an actual pod that actually needs a dependency. I'm just going to use a replication controller. And what we have here, I'm just going to show a small section, we have two Docker containers that require each other. So we have our PG View app, and it wants its own local memcache so that it can cache things locally. Right? So Kubernetes gives us a way to express this dependency. And we can do it in a way where we can actually stamp out as many of these things as we need. But the beauty here is that we can think about this as one atomic unit. It's a pod. Right? So a pod is a collection of containers that we can treat as one logical service. All right? We're on the same page here. We're not going to be logged into any servers, because that's the, one of the challenges here. But we will list uh, some of the nodes. This command I'm typing is kubectfg. I've been using Kubernetes for a long time, and now this is a legacy CLI tool. So if you work at Google on the Kubernetes team, deal with it. We're going to keep going. <laughs> All right, so we're going to list nodes. I do have a special snowflake in there. I actually have labels, and we'll see that labels are a very powerful concept in Kubernetes. This is how we make all the other components work together as a team. So one of the labels we have that's unique on one node is where the database is going to land. You can picture in your mind that's the only machine in the cluster that has access to the data for a particular database. So this is like reality. Google people are like, wow, one machine for the database? No, we don't have Spanner in the real world. <laughs> so what we're going to do is kick things off by um, spinning up a Postgres instance. So all of these things are basically expressed as configs. We only want one Postgres instance here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use a pod and not a replication controller because we don't, Postgres isn't really designed to scale out horizontally automatically. You have to do a bunch of work. But what we can do is make sure that we schedule it to a specific node. So inside this pod definition, we're specifying some labels of the host that must match, mainly that it needs to be the database label. So what we're going to do is create this pod. And we'll end up with the scheduler kicking in. So for a lot of people, scheduling of services is a new thing. Most people do have a scheduler. You have like a meet scheduler, right? You have a couple of guys that you call sysadmins, and they have this awesome database called a spreadsheet. And when you need them to deploy something, they update the database, and they deploy your app. If he takes a vacation, good luck. So once that's deployed, we can list all the pods in the system. So now it's up and running. Another challenge we had is we wanted automatic service discovery. I don't want to go around giving this IP out to anyone because this pod could move to another machine. So the goal here is that we need an abstraction that handles service discovery and something that we can give out to other applications. So we're going to introduce this concept of a service. So our service is another stateful declaration that we can give the cluster to provide abstraction over the actual logical service here. So we'll create a service really quick. Um, we're going to create a service for Postgres. All right, so what we ended up with was a portal IP. So Kubernetes has a concept of a collection of IPs that we can use for services for our application. This is really key once we start getting to services that scale out, right? So with this service IP, if everything is actually working, I should be able to use Postgres or Postgres client to hit the database. I love doing these demos because half the people in the crowd are like, it's not going to work. So let's see. Click. Oh, well, let's make sure that it's up first. All right, looks like everything's in place. Is it, is it going to work? It needs to work, because I like, totally practiced like five times. Let's make sure that it has a run in place. OK. Oh my goodness. It's not working. All right, so our pod is up, running here. Yes, it is. And I like have 10 minutes, so this needs to start moving. <laughs> and we have a service here. And here's our service IP. I'm going to be so sad if this doesn't work. Because in my mind, it's like, this is going to be an awesome demo. They're going to be tweeting about it and everything. What's that? No. This is supposed to work. Who thinks I should tear it down and do it again really quick? Yeah. All right, so we're going to down the cluster. Click, click, click. I'm going to speed through all that. Down, 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 down. All right, so we're going to bootstrap the cluster from scratch. So this is like double dangerous. This is stopping every node in the cluster, it's stopping etcd, it's stopping the Kubernetes services. We're going to revert to a snapshot. We're taping this live, so like you're going to edit all of this out, right? <laughs> the video guys in back like all the time. All right, so we're going to bring the cluster back up. All right. So we're bringing these up one by one. And I have VMware over here, so these all are actually coming up. So these are all booting. And then we'll get some indication that they actually boot. Tick, tock, tick.
All right, so if this works, we'll use Fleet since I'm running CoreOS. All right, so they're coming up one by one. There's our Kubernetes server. There's a couple of nodes. And most things are online, so I'm going to start registering these things with Kubernetes. So kube cfg create some nodes. All right, there's one. All right, we have three nodes in this cluster. All right. So we have all our machines. And then Kubernetes will detect these since we just registered them with the master. Tick, tock, tick, tick, tock, tick. If this doesn't work, I'm going to just take the L and go sit down. <laughs> Someone's like, I knew it wasn't going to work. No logging in. I know. Like, this is, the, this is the challenge here. So what's happening is I should log in, but I don't want to. <laughs> I so want to log in. Is there someone in the crowd like, why is he not using the watch command? There's a reason, it's because of my environment file, but whatever. It's more entertaining. Is it? Yeah. All right, we're going to give this a few more seconds. If this doesn't go, I feel just totally sad, and I have failed you. What's that? Stand up SRE. Stand up SRE. Oh! All right, so that's one. All right, there's two. All right, now, demo gods. All right, so now if this all works, we're going to create. Kid, are you kicking me out? Keep coding. All right, so create um, our pods. So we're going to launch our Postgres pod again. Uh, Postgres pods. So Postgres is up and running. Now Postgres, start. This is me and my personal relationship. All right, so what we're going to have do now, we have Postgres up and running. It's not lying. And then we're going to create this service, cube CFG, uh, dash C, services. So we have a Postgres service. And if this works, we're going to be able to hit Postgres. All right, so now we have an IP. That should get us to that Postgres server. If this is all working, I should be able to hit this. Show of hands. It is pretty intense. Yeah. All right. I'm going to race through it. I'm going to race through it. OK, so then go over there then. All right. So now that we have Postgres up, we have a server up. Let's deploy the application to make the admins happy, right? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a replication controller because we want one or more. It has to be able to scale horizontally, right? Um, so what we're going to do is create a replication controller for this thing called PG View. We're almost done here. Don't, it's not going to take too long. Uh, we're going to create, can I spell replication controllers? Oh, I can. All right. <laughs> so if that works, we'll do a list of pods. So what we're going to do is the replication controller is going to control n number of pods. And right now we've asked it to give us one pod. We don't trust the developers, so we give them one. And if they can hang with that, we'll maybe give them more. All right, so we wait till that's up, and it says it's now running. If this is in truly, in fact, running, we're going to do the same thing and provide a service because we don't want to hit these things directly. And also, if we use a service, we can take advantage of the built-in service proxy in Kubernetes. So we're going to really quick create another service. And this is going to be for the PGView application, and we're going to create a service. There we go. So we have a new service. Let's list our services. So if this works, uh, where we are, here we go. So here's another service IP. And if this works, I'll be able to get the version of the application that's running. That works. I am happy. Whew. All right. So now that we have the version, our application is deployed. And now we're ready. We're in production. So we're going to see 
uh, we're going to actually test the whole thing, right? It's actually, we're going to get SQL features. We introduce a long sleep. This is a long query. It takes a long time. If memcache is actually working, the next one will go really fast. So memcache is working, and our pod has local namespace, and we can hit memcache on a local host. So we're up and running. Now we're going to run this thing in production. Now I'm going to see if I can write bash. What's that? Uh, there we go. So this is production. We got one node, and we can raise another round of VC funding. All right? <laughs> so now what we need to do is add more nodes. We're going to scale out, right? So we're going to resize. And what we're going to do is tell that replication controller we want three of these things now, right? So we're going to do that. And now we've updated the desired state inside of Kubernetes. And what should happen is it should notice that we don't have all the pods running. And we'll list our pods now. And we'll see that they're coming up. They're in unknown state. You can be in unknown state. And that's our, what our pods are doing. So they're downloading. Docker's doing its thing. Now they're up and running. Let's see what the customer observes. No downtime, right? So the service proxy is handling this for us. This is pretty cool. So now we like the application. And we're getting to the end here. We want to roll out a new version. But you don't trust your developers again. So you want to roll out one of the new versions using what we call the canary pattern. So what we're going to do is re release a new replication controller. So we're going to create a replication co controller for PG view, but the canary uh, controller, right? Uh, yes. So we're going to create a replication controller. What's that? All right, so now we have another one up. We'll look at our pods. And now we see that there's a 2.0 pod coming online. If this is working, here's what the customer's seeing. We see 2.0 there. Can we see that? All right. Yes, so your developers are running great in production, and we're about to end now. And then the last thing we need to do, you have lost control. We're in the middle of a production deployment. You got to chill out. OK. I'm going to go back to the meeting. All right, so now that you're happy that the canary pattern is working, you are going to roll this out across the entire cluster. And we're going to do this uh, with a nice helper command. Um, we're going to say, Kubernetes, go through the stable image and do a rolling upgrade and update the version of the pod that's in play. If this works, you guys should clap really, really loud because the demo guys are being nice. All right, so we're going to do a live rolling upgrade of our server. And we hope that we see no drop connections on the other side. Some of you guys are on the edge of the seats. So let's see if that actually is going to work. And we see 2.0. It looks like 50-50 at this point. Uh-oh, uh-oh, is it going to oh, go 2.0? And if we should see four 2.0s in a row, we're winning. And we've won. <laughs>